What exactly is SSI? SSI stands for Supplemental Security Income. You can get SSI if you are disabled, blind, or age 65 and older. You must be low income and have limited resources. Blind and disabled kids can receive SSI too. What is SSD? SSD stands for Social Security Disability. It's also referred to as SSDI or Social Security Disability Insurance. SSD pays benefits to people with disabilities who have worked long enough and recently enough and who have paid Social Security taxes. What are the similarities between SSI and SSD? Both SSI and SSD are administered by the Social Security Administration, or the SSA. Both programs use the same medical standards to determine whether you qualify for benefits. You can also apply for both SSI and SSD at your local Social Security office. Finally, both SSI and SSD are available for non-citizens who qualify. We'll talk more about that later in this video. What are the differences between SSI and SSD? One important difference is that SSI requires recipients to be low income and have low resources, while SSD does not. This means that the SSD application typically won't ask about your income or how much your assets are worth, while the SSI application does take this information into account. Another difference is in how each program decides the total amount of your benefits. SSI uses a set benefit rate that is decided by the federal government. Depending on the state you live in, your state may add to this amount as well. Finally, SSD and SSI use different time limits to determine how far back you can go to collect your benefits. For SSD, it's possible to collect cash benefits going back 12 months before the date you filed your SSD application. SSI is stricter. You cannot collect SSI benefits until the first month after you filed your SSI application. The takeaway here is that you should not delay filing an SSI application after you become disabled because you lose the opportunity to receive benefits for every month you delay. How does the Social Security Administration determine whether I am disabled for the purposes of SSI and SSD benefits? The Social Security Administration, or SSA, uses a five-step process to determine whether or not you qualify for benefits. If, after completing a step, the SSA determines that you are not disabled, it does not continue on to the next step. The program only continues to the next step if the current step indicates you may be disabled. The one exception to this is at step three. Let's discuss step one of the five-step sequential evaluation process. On step one, the SSA considers your work activity. If you are engaged in what's called substantial gainful activity, the program will consider you not disabled and you will not qualify for benefits. Substantial gainful activity is work that involves significant physical or mental activities. Gainful activity is work usually done for pay or profit. In 2023, the limit for substantial gainful activity will be $1,470 per month pre-tax. Keep in mind that for blind individuals, the limit for substantial gainful activity will be different. If the SSA determines you are not engaged in substantial gainful activity, it moves on to evaluate your case based on Step 2. Let's discuss Step 2 of the five-step sequential evaluation process. Step 2 considers the medical severity of your impairments. This means the SSA looks at whether your disability prevents you from working. The impairments must be expected to last 12 months or to result in death. This is called a duration requirement. If this is not the case for you, the SSA will find you are not disabled and therefore do not qualify for benefits. 
If the SSA determines your impairments are severe, it moves on to evaluate your case based on Step 3. Let's discuss Step 3 of the five-step sequential evaluation process. Step 3 also considers the severity of your impairments. The SSA has a list of medical criteria that are considered to be severe. If your impairment meets the criteria of one of the listed impairments and meets the duration requirement, you are found to be disabled. However, before progressing to Step 4, the SSA also looks at your residual functional capacity, or RFC for short. What is the residual functional capacity? The RFC looks at your capacity for full-time work. This means that SSA wants to see how much physical and mental activity you would be required to do during a 40-hour work week. SSA will also look at whether your condition affects your ability to do that work. The RFC is taken into consideration during steps four and five of the SSA's five-step sequential evaluation process. Let's discuss step four of the five-step sequential evaluation process. Step four looks at your work history. Your past relevant work has to have been substantial gainful activity. You have to have performed it within the last 15 years before you became disabled and you have to have performed it long enough to learn it and reach average performance. SSA looks at two factors. Can you perform your past work in the same way you used to actually perform it? And can you perform your past work in the same way it is generally performed in the national economy? If you have the physical and mental capacity to perform any of your past relevant work, you are found to be not disabled. Finally, let's discuss step five of the five-step sequential evaluation process. At this step, the SSA needs to prove that despite your impairments, you are capable of performing other types of work and therefore do not need benefits. To make this argument, the SSA will look to your RFC and your age, education, and work experience to see if you can make an adjustment to other work. If the SSA decides you can make an adjustment to other work, you will not be considered disabled and you will not receive benefits. SSA considers it more difficult for you to adjust to other work if you are over 50 years old. If you complete all five steps of this process, you will be found disabled and you will qualify for SSI and or SSD benefits. That was a quick overview of the five-step sequential evaluation process that the Social Security Administration uses to determine whether you are eligible to receive SSI and or SSD benefits. Our office can assist you in figuring out whether you likely qualify for benefits under this evaluation process. We can also assist you if SSA says you do not qualify for benefits based on this evaluation process. Lastly, it is important to note that SSI and SSD benefits are both available to non-citizens, but there are different eligibility criteria for each program. First, let's discuss SSI for non-citizens. There are different types of qualified non-citizens who can get SSI, and this determination usually depends on your legal immigration status. Our office can help you figure out if you qualify. You can get SSI if you are a non-citizen and are one of the following. Number one, you were lawfully residing in the U.S. on August 22, 1996, and either one, you are on SSI back then, or two, you are now blind or disabled and a qualified alien. Number two, you are a current green card holder. You need to have 40 quarters of work history, which is roughly 10 years. Also, you need to show either that one, you entered the U.S. before 1996, or two, you entered after 1996, but you have been a qualified alien for at least five years. Number three, you are a qualified alien exempt from the five-year bar. Some examples of qualified aliens are legal permanent residents, refugees, asylees, 
persons granted withholding of deportation or removal, parolees for a year or more, conditional entrants, Cuban-Haitian entrants, Amer Asians, VAWA self-petitioners, veterans, and members of the military and dependents. Next, let's discuss SSD for non-citizens. SSD benefits are available for all workers who are required to pay Social Security taxes out of their income, whether they are citizens, have their green cards, or have non-immigrant visas. You must have a Social Security number assigned to you, or you must have a B1, D1, or D2 visa, and must be able to prove you are in the U.S. lawfully for any month for which you're claiming benefits. Again, our office can help you figure out if you qualify. If you need any assistance along the way, do not hesitate to reach out for help. If you live in New York City, call Legal Services of NYC at 917-661-4500 or the New York Legal Assistance Group at 212-613-5000. Both agencies assist with appeals. Legal Services NYC also assists with applications. Visit us online at lsnyc.org or nylag.org. If you live outside of New York City, contact your nearest Legal Services Corporation provider. Visit lsc.gov or lawhelp.org to find a provider near you.